Network Security Virtual Private Networks. In this video we are going to talk about VPNs, virtual private networks in general. We will try and define a VPN, why we should start using a VPN connection and we'll try and answer a question. Is it secure? The first question is what is a VPN? We can say that a VPN, a virtual private network, is it is a network technology that allows us to set up a secure connection over a public network. For instance, the internet. That's the easiest definition I can come up with. As you can see on the screen, we have two sites, one in the United States, one in Taiwan. What we want to do, we want to send a message from PC1 to a server that is in the USA. The problem is that this is the internet. We know the internet is not secure. What do we mean by that? Well, we will go through, I don't know, 50 or 60 ISPs, internet service providers. Anyone can, in theory, look at your message. And that's not what you want. You want to make sure that PC1 can download or, or send a message, doesn't matter, to or from the server in a secure way. What we mean by that is we want to make sure that nobody can look at our message or to be more specific cannot figure out what's inside because we can't really uh, do that just you know your ISP internet service provider can in theory always look at your messages the idea is to encrypt your traffic we are going to talk about it later on I don't want to get into details at this stage we'll have a dedicated video or even two to encryption again a virtual private network allows us to create a secure connection over a public network that's the most common definition you can hear and see We have two main types of VPNs. You will find that on the internet everywhere. People try and, you know, group VPN connections. There are many different ways of doing that. I want to talk about two main types. It's a site-to-site -side VPN and a remote VPN connection. The first one is site-to-site -side VPN. This one, it is over here, and that's what we saw in the previous uh, picture as well. It means we have two sites, two networks, two locations. We want to send a message from this network, from this site, to the other side in a secure way. To make it happen, we need a VPN connection that will be established between these two sites, not between these two PCs, in most cases between these two sites, using a dedicated device. It can be a router, it can be a firewall, it can be a VPN server. In most cases, you will have a dedicated device. This PC over here, as far as this PC is concerned, it has no idea it's going through the VPN. Absolutely no idea. It thinks that, well, this PC is somewhere on my network, whatever, I don't really care. I can see I can reach that PC. That is a site-to-site -side VPN. Sometimes you will hear people call it LAN-to-LAN. Or I think Microsoft like to call it router to router VPN. That is not a very popular term. 
side-to-side -side VPN, LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPN. What we mean by that, this is LAN, local area network. Let's call it LAN 1. And this is local area network 2. We are going to connect these two sides, again, these two sides. We are going to connect them using VPN, but we are going through the internet. It's not a secure place. We don't trust people on the internet. That's why we need a site-to-site -site VPN. The second type of VPNs is a remote VPN. It is over here. And in this case, we are at home. What we want to do, we want to connect to a server that is over here. It can be our workplace or let's say that is our office, whatever, or maybe you're in a hotel and you want to connect to your home network. This is a remote VPN connection. You have a laptop, you have a PC, you have a mobile phone, you want to VPN to this network. That's how we call it, to VPN. We, we can use that as a verb as well. We can VPN to this network. What it means is we are going to set up a secure connection, but this time between our laptop and our VPN device. Again, it can be a router, it can be a firewall, it can be a dedicated server with a piece of software running on it. It doesn't matter at this stage. The idea is that you are going to set up a tunnel, a VPN tunnel, a secure connection that will allow you to connect to these guys. And the last thing I want to discuss at this stage here with this slide is that when you VPN to this network, it feel you, you will have this feeling that you are over here. That's the idea of VPNs in most cases. You will feel that you're actually connected to your main network. It feels like you were in the office. That's the idea. Of course, sometimes what you want to do, you want to tell that, well, Sorry, if you, VP, if you VPN, you will not be allowed to access this server. I don't know, for some security reasons, I don't know, it, it can happen. It's not a very common solution, because if you can VPN, then you should get access to things that you use every day. Still, it can be achieved using, for instance, access list policies and so on. Again side-to-side -side VPN and remote VPNs. We have a lot of VPN protocols and we are going to discuss them later on. Now I want to mention that there are protocols that were designed to make VPN work. Yeah, we need something that will allow us to create this side-to-side -side VPN or a remote VPN tunnel. And we use dedicated protocols to make it work. As you can see on the screen, I listed four, in my opinion, the most popular protocols. There are some other protocols or you can group them again in many different ways. PPTP, L2TP, IPsec, and SSL. The first two, again, I will not get into details because we'll cover that later on. PPTP and L2TP, they are really popular because there is a client built into Windows. You don't need to download anything. That's easy. PPTP is not secure anymore, we should avoid using it. IPsec is really a standard for VPNs today. If possible, 
we should use IPsec and avoid using especially PPTP. L2TP can be combined with IPsec. SSL is a new flavor of VPN, if you wish, and I I noticed that people have have deployed a lot of SSL VPNs in the last couple of years. It has become really popular. I'm pretty sure you all go, okay, what is SSL VPN? It's like just what, what, what what's that? Again, we'll have a dedicated video to SSL VPNs. The idea for an SSL VPN is to make your life easier and allow your users to connect to your network using a web browser. It means that they will open Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, whatever browser they want, they will type an IP address or a name let's say company.com forward slash SSL, whatever name you dedicated to that service, and they can connect to the network. Awesome. You don't need a client. You don't have to set up anything. No, you, in a way, you browse the internet. And that's what your users love because it is simple. As you probably know, all users know how to browse the internet, right? That's what they do. They go to Facebook, YouTube, you know, whatever, Twitter. When you try and teach them how to use PPTP or let's say Cisco IPsec client, they say, oh, that's really complicated, mate. When, when every time I show someone an SSL VPN option, they go, wow. That's it? Really? I just put my username and password? It's like going to Facebook, mate. Yes, it is very easy. You open a web browser, you can access your corporate network. Again, there will be a dedicated video to uh, SSL and we will discuss that in details and I'm going to show you an SSL VPN, probably on an ASA Cisco firewall. Is it secure? Well, it all depends if you have set it up in the right way so far and make sure that you go for the best protocol possible with the best options possible. We'll talk about encryption, authentication, options available for your VPNs and what is the best available. However, sometimes it is not that easy. There is a chance that your device will not support IPsec VPNs, something that you know you should use. For instance, if you want to set up, if you want to, let's say you have a home network, yeah, you, you are a home user. Let me just show you that, what I mean. Let's say you are over here, that's the internet, that is your home router, let's say, I don't know, Linksys. And this is your network. Let's say you have a server here, a NAS server, a very popular device that you want to access. Of course, there are many other ways available for you to access it. I will focus on VPN here. You want to VPN to your network, right? What's the problem? Well, the problem is that you will have to check if your device supports VPNs at all. There is a big chance it's not an option. If you bought a router for, I don't know, 40 pounds, do not expect any VPN options on it. At all, do not expect that. You have to pay much more to have PPTP. That's the basic VPN. Not sure if you remember, we discussed that a few minutes ago. If you want to get, have something better like 
SSL, do you remember the web browser based VPN or IPsec? Well, that is 100 pounds. Of course, there is a way around. We can use OpenVPN. We can use, for instance, for Linksys routers, we can use an alternative uh, an alternative firmware image still if you want to go for VPNs you will have to invest some money that's the only way to make it happen of course there are options that I, I prepared a lab for you team viewer there are some free options available for you but believe me, if you want to use that every day and it is a serious project and you want to have a reliable connection, you will go for a piece of hardware. You will have a dedicated router, a dedicated firewall or a dedicated server, a Microsoft server, a Linux server, if you know how to use it. You will have a dedicated device that will be responsible for connecting for, for, for your VPNs. In this video, we talked about virtual private networks in general. We discussed VPNs. I answered the question, why should I start using a VPN? And we mentioned a few things about the security aspects of VPNs. Thank you very much. Network security, virtual private networks, IPsec. We want to talk about IP security or IPsec in this video. It's not easy because we can we can we could spend hours maybe even days talking about ipsec protocols and encryption modes things that you need to know about ipsec i will try and tell you what is really important and will allow you to understand this solution much better ipsec is really popular and it is like the foundation for all VPNs. It has been with us for ages and it's not going anywhere. The main reason for that is that IPsec is not a protocol. IPsec is a framework. It is a set of protocols that was designed to support secure exchange of information. It was designed many, many years ago, and the good thing about IPsec is that we can add or remove protocols and pieces that are inside of IPsec. Let's say that you are really, really clever, right? And you said, well, AES is, is crap. I have a great idea, and I will call it mic 7 okay you came up with a new encryption solution and everybody on the internet everybody has tested it in the last couple of months and they say well that's awesome it's great cisco said oh that's great yeah we want that hp said oh that's great microsoft said, well, that's awesome, it's much better than AES, it is 500 times faster and 700 times more secure. What can we do? Without any problems, we can include that in IPsec and make our virtual private networks even more secure. You don't have to change the whole protocol and redesign everything. Not really. You can include this new protocol in IPsec. And that's what, what, what has happened many, many times in the last couple of years and more than that. AES is, you know, it's, it's, it's a new protocol and it was added to IPsec a few years ago. If our protocol, if our new protocol, MIC7, 
is so great, it will be added to IPsec framework as well. There are a lot of pieces that make IPsec work. I want to introduce a few terms first. Let's start with data integrity. Data integrity is something that will allow us to ensure that data has not been changed in transit. We can use, for instance, MD5 and SHA. We have a dedicated video to hashes. I encourage you to watch that. The second one is encryption. Why? Well, it is important. We want to make sure that nobody can understand what we are sending across this VPN tunnel. Why? Well, because there is one problem and there is no way around. If you are here and you want to send a message to point B, these are two routers, let's say, or two firewalls, router one and router two. Here you will have, that's the internet. You will have a lot of ISPs on the way, internet service providers. Of course, they are not even allowed to look at your traffic and read what, what's inside. But I am going to ask the following question. Can you really stop them? No, no, of course not. They can just, you know, watch your traffic 24-7. They're not going to change it. They will just make a local copy of all your messages. You won't even notice. There is absolutely nothing you can do about that. Sometimes we call it a man-in-the-middle attack if they wanted to take advantage of that. I don't really care. Why? Because I am going to use this. I am going to encrypt my traffic. I hope not with this because they would be able to decrypt that. We should use 3 DES or AES or let's say our mic 7. Thanks to that, ISP, they can capture as many packets as they want. I don't really care because, well, I, I do. If, if that was the case, they, they would be in trouble. The idea is that because I used one of these protocols, they cannot understand what's inside. That is confidentiality. We have a few more solutions available here. One of them is a key exchange protocol, Diffie-Hellman. This is designed to establish a shared key between two sides. Do you remember our discussion symmetric and asymmetric encryption? It is very, very similar. We have to have a way to send a pressured key or set up a pressured key between two sides in a secure way. And this protocol is designed to make it happen. Again, we have many different versions. That's not all of them here. In most cases, when you go up, that is more secure. Authentication. We want to make sure we can authenticate our peers. We discussed that guy. Here, IPsec protocol. The main is ESP. We do not really use AH because this guy does not support encryption. That's why 99% of VPNs, probably 99.9, .9, will use ESP as the main IPsec protocol. ESP stands for Encapsulation Security Payload and it allows us to use encryption, data integrity and authentication. Everything that we need. If you wanted to use AH, you would be left with authentication, integrity but no encryption. That's not good and in most cases we don't want that we want to have encryption as well. Another thing that we have to discuss we, when we talk about IPsec is that there are two main phases of IPsec. And you will hear that everywhere. 
if you talk, if you speak to a network engineer or, you know, they're troubleshooting some IPsec issues, you will always hear them. Oh, Ike phase one is up. There is a problem with Ike phase two or yeah, just Ike phase one doesn't want to come up. You will hear that everywhere and it's pretty important to understand how it works. You will not get to phase two if you don't have phase one. Phase one will allow you to as is, is established to provide a secure management channel. And phase two is designed for data transfer. Okay, so phase one you can imagine like a secure tunnel, like the foundation of everything. And phase two is designed to actually start sending your messages between point A and B. As you can imagine, if you don't have phase one, well, you you should never allow phase two, right? If you don't have the base, you should not allow any traffic to go through this tunnel. And that's the case with IPsec. If Ike phase one fails, then you will never get to phase two. What happens at Ike phase one? Well, there are a lot of things that happen, but the idea for Ike phase one is to negotiate some policies and both sides, let's say this is router one here and this guy is router two, right? What you want to do, you want to negotiate what you're going to use for, for this VPN. For instance, A is going to say, well, dear router B, are you happy to use the encryption AES-128. Do you support hashing MD5? I would like to use a pre-shared key. I want to use a password. I don't want to use a certificate. And router B will get all these things and will say, yeah, I like this, I like this, I... no, I don't like that. And you're done. You don't like this policy. And router B will say, nah, that's not good. Router A says, okay, what about this one? What if I used three days, SHA, and so on? Yeah, they, they go and they negotiate everything. That is one of the things that happen at Ike phase one. As I said, Ike phase two, phase two is designed for data transfer. We are going to use keys and we want to exchange our information and that's what happens at Ike phase 2. Sometimes we call it IPsec. Here is a screenshot, I think it's from an ASA firewall, where you can see Ike phase 1. It used AES256 and some more information everything that was negotiated between these two sides. For instance, we are going to use pre-shared keys. Yeah? And here are some standard ports. Please note, we have Defi Hellman and both sides agreed they would use group 2 to exchange keys. You expect to see Ike phase one if you if something goes wrong and your IPsec phase one is not up, then you will never go down to Ike phase two. You have to sort it out. In most cases, it's pretty easy. In it it means that, for instance, you tried to force AES-256 and the other side doesn't like it, does not support it. You have to, if you create, especially a side-to-side -side VPN, you have to literally mirror everything. It has to match on both ends. If you say AES-256 on router A or on a firewall A, you have to set it up in the same way on your router number two, firewall number two, server number two. They have to match. That's, that is pretty easy to troubleshoot because 
you you have to compare both routers both firewalls servers and you should be able to recognize and find oh you're trying to use i don't know let's say hashing sha1 and the other side is not ready to and happy to do that because you gave you you said it should use something else there is one more thing that you will hear when people discuss ipsec that there are two modes it's a tunnel and transport mode on many devices the tunnel mode is the default one and in this mode the entire ip packet will be protected by ipsec in most cases to keep it simple we use the tunnel mode between two gateways for instance to firewalls the transport mode in ipsec is used for end-to-end -end communication in this video we talked about ipsec as you can see there are a lot of pieces to make it work that's why i created a lot of dedicated videos to encryption hashing ssl and so on because it's not easy to put everything in one place ipsec is very important there is a big chance that you use ipsec in your company or on a laptop if you want to work from home a good thing about ipsec is that to summarize is that a lot of companies will not license ipsec for instance cisco you can have hundreds of ipsec remote and side-to-side -side vpns no licenses required ssl oh yes they will charge a lot of money for ssl vpns and as you can imagine that's why they recommend ssl of course ssl in many cases is better than ipsec especially for your users still IPsec is a very popular solution that you will find everywhere and it can be combined with some other protocols for instance L2TP thank you very much network security virtual private networks authentication when we connect to when we VPN to a network in most cases we will be asked we're talking about remote access in 99.999 percent will be asked for a username and password I want to discuss available options how it works protocols home and enterprise solutions for that I will show you a firewall a Windows Server Protoc uh, Windows Server solution everything that you can see in the real world if you for instance work from home or maybe you want to set up something like that in your home or company network we have two authentication levels it's the computer level authentication and user authentication level we want to focus focus on the user authentication when we VPN to a network will be asked for a username and password there are two main solutions that are available for us the first one that you can see in small companies it is let me just change that it is local database and second is radius local database it means that you are going to create a local username and password on a VPN device what does it mean let's say this is your router that is providing VPN PPTP okay 
this is your corporate network with some service that's the internet and you are over here working from home you are happy you can work that's not a happy face that's a happy face you can work from home when you connect to when you VPN to this network you will be asked for a username and password and in this case your network administrator decided to use a local database it means that he created a username and password for you on router 1 and of course he gave it to you that is a solution that is not flexible and not a very popular solution even if you have a small company a lot of network engineers will go for this protocol we are going to talk about that in a moment why first of all it is a problem for you in most cases this is a username and password that is not the same as the one that you use to log into Windows Active Directory account that's how we call it in most cases it's not the same you can say well it is more secure yeah fair enough it can be more secure however it means you have to memorize one more username and password if your Active Directory username and password is strong enough that's more than more than enough and you can make it more secure using for instance two-factor authentication we're going to talk about it in a few moments it makes more sense second of all it's not easy to manage that why if you put that on a router yeah who manages a router a network engineer who manages a Windows Server an infrastructure engineer well sometimes it's the same engineer if it's not then you know they have to do that and you know you have to set up a username and password here he has to do that in Active Directory and send that or tell you what to use what if you forget your username and password you need a network engineer or someone who is trained how to change that on the router it's very easy to reset a password in Active Directory on a Windows Server uh, platform it's very very easy a first line help desk guy can do that in one minute it's not that easy to do that on many routers and firewalls you have to make sure that he cannot access anything else because he is not trained to manage this device that's why all these points indicate it makes sense to use this protocol radius is a networking protocol that it will allow us to provide centralized authentication authorization and accounting it means I can tell you you have to have a valid password I can specify what you can do and I can check what you have been doing that's sometimes we call it triple A authentication authorization and accounting and it is a centralized solution radius is is a, is a protocol that is supported on many many platforms it's an open standard protocol it means it can be used by all vendors Cisco Microsoft HP and you know almost everybody you will find that everywhere I want to show you a radius on a Windows Server 2008 I use that in my home network I'll show you my network it, that is an ASA firewall that's the internet and this firewall of course there is a switch doesn't matter here there is a Windows Server 2008 box there is a Windows Server 2008 box 
and the way it works is well I put a lot of information on the screen you have that in the background here ASA is not going to authenticate a user who wants to VPN to the network it works like that you VPN to the network you are connect you're trying to connect to the ASA and ASA says well what is your username and password and you say well my username is Mike and password is Cisco right and ASA says well I don't really know if that's okay I will ask this guy I was trained I was set up to ask somebody else if that's okay and ASA goes to Windows Server 2008 and asks okay Mike is trying to authenticate uh, con is trying to connect to me using Mike ask his username and password is Cisco is it correct and Windows Server says yep yeah, sure that is what I can see in my active directory database I can see that as an account for Mike the good thing for Mike is that this is the same username and password that he uses every day when he is in his office to log into Windows right he types Mike and Cisco that's what he can type when he is at home and he wants to connect to the corporate network can you see how easy it is what will happen if Mike forgets his password well that's what I said a help desk team can sort it out in two minutes they will connect to Windows Server 2008 they will reset this password and let Mike know what he should use that's very easy and he can he can get a new password in two minutes you don't have to change anything on the ASA because ASA is not really aware of this username and password it is sending this message on behalf of Mike in a way yeah it's forwarding this message and the language the protocol behind this is called radius that's not the only protocol there is for instance TACAX that is really popular with Cisco devices because it allows you to be more specific with authorization what a user can do for VPNs the most popular protocol is radius because again it is very 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 easy to set up in Windows 7 2003 8 and 12 it's very similar to PPTP when I discussed PPTP I said it was very easy to set up the same applies to a radius server you don't have to know anything about servers and you can set up a radius server in a few minutes it's very easy there are literally two or three steps to make it happen and it is very very easy to understand for your end users well that's a lot on the screen before we move that will be the next video I want to show you the radius server on my Windows Server 2008 the first thing you you set it up Windows 2008 and 12 they have a special role that is called network policy server if you don't have that you have to add a role like that in your Microsoft server if it is there then you go to radius clients and you have to add a new client you right click you add a new client you specify a name an IP address and a shared secret you want to make sure that both devices have the same shared secret a password 
I have one, two, three, as you can see, four devices. That's the ASA that I'm going to show you in a moment. The AP address is 10, 10, 10, 1. Friendly name is ASA. We are going to use radius standard and it is enabled. Very easy. Then you have to create a policy. This is pretty simple because it is a very, very simple topology. What you want to say, in most cases, you want to specify that a user should be a member of a group. In my case, I specified that if you want to connect to my corporate network, you have to be a member of that group. You don't have to do that, but 99% of companies will do that. Why? For security reasons. And let's say you don't want, well, let's say Mike is not allowed to work from home, right? He is not allowed to connect your network from home. You, you don't want to disable his account because he will not be able to log when he gets into his office. You want to make sure he cannot VPN to the network. I don't know what he did, but it doesn't matter. The idea is that he's not allowed to VPN. What you can do, you can remove Mike from, in my case, Windows SBS Virtual Private Network users. You can create a dedicated group in Active Directory on a Windows Server that will allow you to specify a group that should be required. That's a very, very popular solution. And the second rule is that is the IP address that is that that has to be matched. You can use a friendly name that I could use ASA, not an IP address. I remember I had some problems with friendly names. That's why I used an IP address. It doesn't matter. You can do both ways. Of course, it is recommended you use a friendly name because then if you change your IP address, you don't have to change that in your network policy. Very simple to use, and that's literally all you have to do, basic steps to make it work. Very easy, as you can see, I have a few network policies in place and connection request policies as well, if you need to tweak them. There are some default policies that should work for you. If not, you can customize and create your own policy. On the firewall, I show you two solutions. First of all, you can create the local database, a local username and password. On an ASA firewall, you go to users and user accounts. Here, I can click add. It will open a new window and will ask, OK, what is the username? What is the password? And one of the things that you can do you can say, well, that's it. No ASDM, SSH, Telnet or console access. It is enough for a user to be allowed to VPN, but he is not allowed to manage your device. If you want to be more flexible, you can, that's what I did, connect your ASA with using using a network protocol like, like Radius with a Windows Server, in my case, 2008. In 2012, it's exactly the same, really. I'll show you it is done under AAA. Do you remember? AAA, triple A, authorization, authentication, and accounting. I have a lot of groups, but that's the one I'm interested in. I created a Radius SBS 2008. I put the IP address 172.16.1.2. When you edit, you will see that there is a field to specify the password. Not sure if you remember when I showed you the NPS network policy server on server 2008, there was a place to put a password. They have to match. On ASA, you can test it. 
let's see, I want to test if my radio server is up and running. I can use authentication, specify a username and password, go to the radio server, in my case Windows Server 2008, and ask, is it going to work if a Wi-Fi user tries to connect tomorrow the day after? And my server said yes. ASA reported that and said, well, I can see that authentication to the host was okay when you tried to use this username and password. If you make a mistake or you use an account that does not exist, whatever password does matter, it will go to the radio server and the radio server will say, well, sorry mate, I cannot recognize a username and password. And it's going to tell you authentication rejected. It means that I was able to connect to the radio server, but the radio server didn't like the username and password. You have to be able to recognize this message because sometimes you can see an error saying, an error message saying timed out. It means that your device, in my case a firewall, was not able to reach the radio server. If that happens, you have to check your IP address, make sure that the server is up and running, radius is okay, and so on. You have to check all these things. In this video we talked about authentication. I showed you the local database and a networking protocol that is really really popular remote authentication dial-in user service or RADIUS. Thank you very much. Network security, virtual private networks, site-to-site -site IPsec VPN lab on a Cisco router. That will be a pretty advanced lab. I will try and keep it simple. There will be two videos dedicated to this lab. In the first one I will talk about um, IPsec VPNs on a Cisco device. In general I will show you what to expect, how to implement that. Again, this is virtual private networks for beginners. I appreciate you might want to see something more advanced. Maybe you, you've been working with Cisco for a while, you know the CLI. If not, still I encourage you to watch that. It will give you a very good idea how you can apply IPsec protocols and everything that we have covered in a real world situation. It will be a very good idea because it will show you if you want to move on. Training like that might be a good idea if you want to start your career in security. Maybe I just managed to uh, to encourage you to do that. That's great. And I hope that this video will uh, give you a very good idea about IPsec VPNs on a Cisco router. That is our topology. There are two routers that we are going to use. They are connected uh, directly with a crossover cable. In the real world, of course, you will have the internet over here, right? I want to keep it simple. That's why they are connected directly. It does not change anything. It's, you know, it's much easier to do it that way in a lab. Router 1 has a public IP address 1.1.1.1 .1 and Router 2 has a public IP address 1.1.1.2. What do we mean by public? It means it is an IP address that, you know, is facing the internet at the moment. In our case, that's how it's how it's done here. Yep, they're connected to each other, and that is like uh, having 
the Internet Cloud. Behind Router 1, there is a local area network, right? It means that this router, I, I will zoom it in in a moment. Uh, what I mean by that is that this router, there are two ports over here. And one port is connected to router 2, and one port is for your local devices like printers, laptops, scanners, and so on. Of course, in most cases, we'll use switch because this router has got two ports only. This LAN local area network is 10771, and this one is 192.168.2.1. Let me zoom in, in, it will be easier to understand. There are two ports, that is F, this one is F01 and this one is F00. When we go back, you will see that this is one link and this link is here. It is like that. I hope it makes sense. It will... I'll show you that when I connect to these routers. If you have never worked with Cisco before, in most cases we manage a Cisco router or a Cisco device using the CLI command line interface. It means that we do not have a web interface. Well, we do, but it's not good. People don't use it. It's not reliable and... It can break a lot of things, that's why we type all commands. It's like going into Windows, you type CMD, and, yeah, I'll show you that. You type CMD, yeah, and you can type, for instance, a very popular command, ipconfig, to see your, and verify your IP address. That's how you manage and configure a Cisco router as well. We'll go to the CLI and we'll make it happen. In this video I will talk about IPsec VPNs on a Cisco router in general. Again, it is pretty advanced, but I will try and keep it as simple as possible. I am connected to router 1 using a console cable. What we mean by that is that on this router there is a dedicated port, which is over here, that is labeled console. It means that you can manage this router using a dedicated cable, a dedicated port. And that's what I connected because when you know when you when you buy a Cisco router or a Cisco Fire or Cisco Switch, in most cases there is no configuration on these devices, and the console port is the only way, in most cases, to connect to a router and set it up. Let's go back. That is router one. Here, I have a template. That's how we create side-to-side -side VPNs on a Cisco device. We don't really type everything. As you can see here, we have, I don't know, 15 lines. These lines are for router 1. I will talk about them in a moment. And this is for router 2. You don't really type everything. Uh, the main reason for that is that you can miss something. You can make a mistake. That's why... In most cases, you will have a template. You will have something that you can use, and you will change a few things. For instance, IP addresses, passwords, maybe encryption, hashing, things like that. Everything else will stay the same. You want to have a template, something that you can use every time you go and set up a new site-to-site -site VPN. The same applies to setting up a Cisco router in general. We don't really type everything. We use a template. Of course, you have to know all these commands because that's how, how we manage Cisco devices. You have to know them anyway because if you want to change something, even in 
in this in this document in notepad you have to understand what's inside right it doesn't change anything what I'm trying to tell you is that you don't really type crypto map VPN 10 IPsec ISEC com as you can see I'm I'm reading uh, this line here we don't really do that in most cases you have a template you copy and paste and change a few things not sure if you remember, I hope that you have watched my previous videos and that is a prerequisite, I encourage you to do that. In IPsec we have Ike Phase 1 and Ike Phase 2. Here we have Ike Phase 1 and below it is Ike Phase 2. Ike Phase 1 we have a policy, we specify what these routers are going to use for Ike phase one for the first phase to exchange the pressured keys to authenticate and so on everything that happens at stage one I decided to use encryption three days I am going to use pressured keys another option is certificate and Defi Hellman group five that is for key exchange group 5. That is just how how many bits are going to be used in Defi Herman. Then the next line specifies my peer IP address. That is a sophisticated name and it just means the other router, right? For instance, you, if you want to set up a side-to-side -side VPN, you will have two routers, right? Or two firewalls and you will you have to know the IP addresses on both ends and that's where you specify your IP address and your pressured key in my case the password at Cisco the worst password you can come up with this line specifies your Ike phase 2 or IPsec phase to remind you this this is used to actually exchange your traffic your data right in my case I use AES and SHA for my hashing. Please note there is no hashing here because if you don't specify the default one will be used. If you want you can specify hashing here. I, I, I'll show you that later on. Then we will skip this one for a while and we move to an access list. An access list on the Cisco router allows you to identify what should be matched and this line is important because you have to tell a Cisco router what is the source and destination IP address for your site-to-site -side VPN when we go back here you will see that we are going we are coming from 1077 one and we are going to 192.168.2.1 that is an IP address network is zero at the end that's why when we go back to this guy we can see source 10.7.7.0 and destination is 192.168.2.0 that is on router 1 on router 2 on this guy source will be here and destination will be here I will scroll it down and show you that it's here on the router 2. We are coming from 192.168.2 and we are going to 10.7.7.0. Now we have to put all these pieces together. You have to tell your Cisco router, oh, this is your peer IP address, the other side. We are going to use these protocols for IPsec and this is sometimes we call it interesting traffic it means traffic that will be sent across this VPN the last line is to apply this crypto map under an interface in my case it is F00 it's over here this interface okay that's that's a template. Let's check router 2. These guys, they have to match. This number is, is locally significant. 
you can have more than one policy, it is important to match the policies on both ends. Of course, I changed the IP address, that is 1111 instead of 1112. This guy has to match here, everything has to match, of course, the router's IP address is 1111 instead of 1112. And my access list, interesting traffic, I am coming from 192.168.2.0 and I'm going to 10.7.7.0. Again, the last line, the last command is to apply it under an interface that, in my case, uh, faces the internet, is facing the internet at the moment. Okay, router 1, that's what we have here, and router 2. Let's go back to our diagram. That's F00. F00, they're connected like that, and from F01 there is a cable going to the first local area network, and on router 2 it's the same, there is a cable that goes over there. The idea is that I have a laptop over here, oops, I have a laptop over here, and I have, well, in a way a laptop, I, I simulate this network, it's not important, I have a device behind this router as well. What I want to do, I want to ping, send a message between these two guys, and that should be sent using my VPN, right? Because it will be it will be encrypted and it should go across my VPN tunnel. There are some show commands that you can use on a Cisco device, I'll show you that. Thanks to that, you can verify that your VPN tunnel is up and you're actually sending all information across your VPN. This is beyond our discussion, but these IP addresses, this one and that one, they are private IP addresses. It means that without a VPN or a least line or something that you buy from your ISP, you will not be able to access these networks directly anyway. That's why you need a VPN. It's not like an option for you. You need that because these are private IP addresses. And again, it is beyond our discussion, but there are firewalls, there are NAT, network address translation, things in place that will, you know, will make sure that you cannot access it directly. And that makes sense because Anyone could do that. That's where I want to leave. In the next video we are going to apply these commands and send a ping message, make sure that this VPN is up and running. Thank you very much. Network Security Virtual Private Networks Authentication Part 2 Want to discuss two-factor authentication. Today, if you want to make a VPN connection more secure, by the way, the, this, this two-factor authentication topic applies to many other solutions and places. For instance, if you want to connect to your online banking, Two-factor authentication, it means that we have two stages to verify the identity. In most cases, it is something you know and something you have. Something you know, it can be a password in most cases, and something you have. For instance, a certificate, a, mess, a text message on your mobile phone, or a special small security token. I want to show you a solution that I have been using and it is free for small companies and home users. That is duosecurity.com. 
it is very easy to set up I'll show you how I achieved that on an ASA file the idea is very simple you need a password and then you will get a message on your well th there is an application running on my mobile phone and if I want to connect to my home VPN network it is not enough to put a password Duo security will send a message to an application that is running on my mobile phone it looks like that is that you and literally that's the message are you sure you want to connect can you confirm that it is you if that's the case if I press yes I confirm I will be allowed to VPN to the network this solution is user-friendly because it is on your mobile phone a lot of people say it's not really secure because you know there is always a chance that someone can steal your phone or upload a Trojan or a virus on your phone well if you're crazy secure yes still what you have to remember a solution that you're going to design in your network has to be as user-friendly as possible and this is and easy to deploy and that's what this solution is all about I cannot argue that uh, for instance a small token might be more secure still it's not bad because it is a two-factor authentication solution I need a password and my mobile phone even if someone gets access to my mobile phone he needs to know my password and I am going to use SSL which is very very secure I am going to show you that on the firewall first let's connect from from a test laptop that's the URL that will allow me to connect to the firewall it is something you will get from a network team or an infrastructure engineer in your company in most cases you will get a DNS name not an IP address I'm okay with with an IP address I will be asked to put my username and password not sure if you remember I have a username Wi-Fi and here is my password that I am not going to give you because this is a real network when I click login please check what's going to happen I'm not going to be allowed to VPN it will go to the next stage and a special message will be sent down to my mobile phone here this application gives you three options Duo push it is an application that is running on my mobile phone and that's my number phone call it means they can call you up and passcode is a backup solution it means that well there is always a chance that you're in a basement or somewhere where there is no range you can't use your mobile phone and that is a passcode that can be generated on your phone and you can type it here let's use Duo push I will click login and let me take my mobile phone here we go login and on my mobile phone I will open a dual mobile application and in a few seconds I should I should see a message saying that I have to confirm it is me I approved it it means that's me and I am allowed to connect to this portal 
By the way, this is SSL VPN. That is a website a portal that you can see if you use SSL VPN clientless. To remind you from the SSL VPN section, it means that you don't need a client on your device, you can use a web browser like Firefox and see all these bookmarks and network services available for you. I have a bookmark here, I can connect to a server and to a PC. I can use many different protocols, that is on on an ASA firewall, I can RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, and I can use VNC. Not sure if you heard about VNC, it's a very, very popular, it's, it's a popular remote support tool. Very similar to TeamViewer, however, VNC is local, you need a server and a client. If you have never heard about VPN, sorry, VNC, I encourage you to read about that. It is a free application as well. There is tight VNC, or if you want to get more features and encryption, you can use, for instance, real VNC. There are a lot of solutions available for remote access, and this is achieved by using plugins. There is a small Java application that is on on the ASA firewall and thanks to that I can use all these services. Any connect because we have covered SSL VPNs that is a good way to to see what's going on. Any connect is a client. Yeah it will allow me to to create a tunnel with this ASA if I want to have a direct connection and it's divided into RDP and VNC services. You can access everything on the home screen dashboard. There is a dedicated video to building an SSL VPN portal on a firewall like that. It's really interesting and I encourage you to watch that because it shows you how flexible this solution is. Well, this video is about authentication. As you can see, we have been authenticated. I want to show you that on the ASA, in the logs, if we go to VPNs and this is clientless, you will see that I am connected. It will report my username, IP address, group policy that was used, protocol, and I have been connected for the last three minutes. It will also show you bytes sent and received. This is like a summary, it is one connection only. In this video we talked about authentication to factor authentication. I encourage you to read a little more because this is a very very popular solution. If you go to a very secure environment you will have a solution like that in place. You will have two factor authentication. You can have an application on a mobile phone or a small device, a token or a, a piece of software on your laptop. It all depends how your network team, how they decided to implement this solution. Thank you very much. Network security, virtual private networks, side-to-side -side IPsec VPN, lab part two. In the previous video, I showed you how to approach an IPsec VPN on a Cisco router. To remind you that is our topology, we have two routers that are connected directly. In the real world that is the internet. It does not change anything here. And we have two local area networks. It is 
10.7.7.0 in a way because it's a network and 192.168.2.0. What we want to do, we want to create a side to side VPN, a VPN tunnel and send some traffic. In our case, we'll ping these two IP addresses and make sure that everything will go across this VPN tunnel. I showed you a template that we are going to use and that's where we are going to start. Router 1, that's what we have for Router 1 and here it is for Router 2. On a Cisco router, we type conf, conf t or configure terminal to go to a special configuration mode. And thanks to that, we can copy and paste everything that we can see on the screen. I recommend you do that, you know, five, six lines at a time. Make sure that if a router doesn't like something, it's going to report that if you paste like, I don't know, 60, 70, 200 lines, you can miss something. Let's start with that one. Oops, sorry. And we just right click and we paste. If we do not see any error messages, that's okay. I want to show you one thing I promised I would. One of them is hashing. And you can specify, I want to use MD5 or SHA. If you don't specify, a Cisco router will use a default solution, a default option. And the problem is that it all depends what, uh, what the version of the operating system you're running. That's why a lot of people specify everything, even though it is a default option. Because I'm using the same image on both routers and I know it will match I can leave it like that. Okay. Let's copy these guys. This is just a warning message saying that we need some more information. A router needs some more information to make it work. That's fine we are going to apply this VPN. That's it. That is all we have to do on router 1. Now I am going to telnet. Telnet means I am going to connect to the other router remotely. That is 1.1.1.2 and I will paste all commands for router 2. That is to remind you Ike phase 1. Okay. Our pre-shared key. Crypto map and access list. And the last one is to apply it. We have to apply it. Okay. Let's go back to our topology. We have 10.7.7.1 on router 1 and 192.168.2.1 on router 2. I'll show you some basic show commands. Again, it's the command line interface. You don't have a web interface which could show us, oh, this VPN is up, this is whatever. Uh, on many devices like Cisco, Juniper, Checkpoint, and so on, we use the CLI, really. And the main command you want to use is show crypto isacamp sa. This is a command that will show you Ike phase 1. That's the most important command. Because if there is no Ike phase 1 in IPsec, there is no Ike phase 2, it means the VPN is not going to work. That's why you have to see QM idle, that's a special mode, 
that identifies, yes, Ike phase one in IPsec has been established and we are ready to go. I, I will type it again. We can not see anything. Why? Well, on a Cisco device, on, it's, it's not only Cisco, it applies to many places. Generally speaking, the v VPN that I am showing you at the moment, it is on demand. What I mean by that is that a Cisco router is not going to bring up that tunnel. It will do that if it recognizes some traffic going from this guy to that guy or from this guy to that guy. Yeah? If there is no traffic going from 10.7.7.1 to 192.168.2.1, this VPN is not going to be established. That's why when you, for instance, send a message for the first time, it can take a while because these routers, they have to negotiate everything. Let's do it then. I am on router 2 on this guy and I am going to ping this IP address. I will use the source command because uh, just a moment, show IP interface brief. I have to check the, the interface. Ping 10.7.7.1, source loopback 192. What, what it means is that this is the source IP address. I want to ping from this IP address to that IP address. Let's do show crypto ISA campus A. Please note QM idle. That's good. It means that we have just established a site to site VPN. There is a command we can type to verify that there is there, there are packets going through this VPN, across this VPN, and they are encrypted and decrypted. It is show crypto IPsec, I say. Yeah, IPsec. That's Ike phase 2, and we should see some encrypted and decrypted packets. If I ping again, if I send a message again, you should see 8 here. Oh, it's nine. Okay, yeah, but yeah, because the first one was, uh, the first one didn't arrive. Yeah, please note here. Yeah, and it's going to send five, ICMP, messages. Yep. Let's do it again to verify. You can what you can do. You can do repeat one hundred times, and then you will send one hundred messages. Now we should see like one. 109, right? Show crypto is a company. Yep. It's really important to see encrypted and decrypted. It means that I sent a message and I received a message, right? I sent a message and I received a message. It's really important. If you see send errors here, for instance, it means that, well, I appreciate I should send something across this VPN tunnel but something is wrong. I can't really tell you what, but something is wrong. And here below, you can see IPsec protocols, protocols that are in use at the moment. We use AES and SHA for IPsec, Ike phase two. In this video, we talked about a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN on a Cisco device. I appreciate it might be pretty advanced for uh, some of you. Still, it is really important to see how you can apply, as, you know, VPN protocols and everything that you have learned so far in the real world. I hope it will show you and you will have a very good idea what you have to learn to apply a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN on a real device. 
If you have a web interface, it is a little easier. Still, you have to go through all these stages. You have to understand what Ike Phase 1 is, what Ike Phase 2 is. You will have to understand which things have to match on both ends to make it work. Thank you very much. Network security, virtual private networks, site to site IPsec VPN, lab part 2. In the previous video, I showed you how to approach an IPsec VPN on a Cisco router. To remind you, that is our topology. We have two routers that are connected directly. In the real world, that is the internet. It does not change anything here. And we have two local area networks. It is 10.7.7.0 in a way, because it's a network, and 192.168.2.0. What we want to do, we want to create a side-to-side -side VPN, a VPN tunnel, and send some traffic. In our case, we'll ping these two IP addresses and make sure that everything will go across this VPN tunnel. I showed you a template that we are going to use and that's where we are going to start. Router 1, that's what we have for Router 1 and here it is for Router 2. On a Cisco router, we type conf, conf t or configure terminal to go to a special configuration mode. And thanks to that, we can copy and paste everything that we can see on the screen. I recommend you do that, you know, five, six lines at a time. Make sure that if a router doesn't like something, it's going to report that if you paste like, I don't know, 60, 70, 200 lines, you can miss something. Let's start with that one. Oops, sorry. And we just right click and we paste. If we do not see any error messages, that's okay. I want to show you one thing I promised I would. One of them is hashing. And you can specify, I want to use MD5 or SHA. If you don't specify, a Cisco router will use a default solution, a default option. And the problem is that it all depends what, uh, what the version of the operating system you're running. That's why a lot of people specify everything, even though it is a default option. Because I'm using the same image on both routers and I know it will match I can leave it like that. Okay. Let's copy these guys. This is just a warning message saying that we need some more information. A router needs some more information to make it work. That's fine. We are going to apply this VPN. That's it. That is all we have to do on router 1. Now I am going to telnet. Telnet means I am going to connect to the other router remotely. That is 1.1.1.2. And I will paste all commands for router 2. That is to remind you Ike phase 1. Okay. Our pre-shared key. Crypto map and access list. And the last one is to apply it. We have to apply it. 
Okay. Let's go back to our topology. We have 10771 on router 1 and 192.168.2.1 on router 2. I'll show you some basic show commands. Again, it's the command line interface. You don't have a web interface which could show us, oh, this VPN is up, this is whatever. Uh, on many devices like Cisco, Juniper, Checkpoint and so on, we use the CLI really. And the main command you want to use is show crypto isacamp sa. This is a command that will show you Ike phase 1. That's the most important command. Because if there is no Ike phase 1 in IPsec, there is no Ike phase 2. It means the VPN is not going to work. That's why you have to see QM idle, that's a special mode that identifies yes Ike phase 1 in IPsec has been established and we are ready to go. I, I will type it again. We can not see anything. Why? Well on a Cisco device, on, it's, it's not only Cisco, it applies to many places. Generally speaking, the VPN that I am showing you at the moment, it is on demand. What I mean by that is that a Cisco router is not going to bring up that tunnel. It will do that if it recognizes some traffic going from this guy to that guy or from this guy to that guy. Yeah? If there is no traffic going from 10771 to 192.168.2.1 this VPN is not going to be established. That's why when you for instance send a message for the first time it can take a while because these routers they have to negotiate everything. Let's do it then. I am on router 2 on this guy and I am going to ping this IP address. I will use the source command because, uh, just a moment, show IP interface brief. I have to check the, in the interface. Ping 10.7.7.1, source loopback 192. What, what it means is that this is the source IP address. I want to ping from this IP address to that IP address. Let's do show crypto ISA campus A, please note QM idle. That's good. It means that we have just established a site to site VPN. There is a command we can type to verify that there is there there are packets going through this VPN, across this VPN, and they are encrypted and decrypted. It is show crypto IPsec SA. Yeah, IPsec, that's Ike phase 2, and we should see some encrypted and decrypted packets. If I ping again, if I send a message again, you should see 8 here. Oh, it's 9, okay. Yeah, but, yeah because the first one was... Uh, the first one didn't arrive, yeah. Please note here. Yeah, and it's going to send five ICMP messages. Yep. Let's do it again to verify. You can what you can do you can do repeat one hundred times and then you will send one hundred messages. Now we should see like one hundred and nine, right? Show crypto is a company. It's really important to see encrypted and decrypted. It means that I sent a message and I received a message, right? I sent a message and I received a message. It's really important. If you see send errors here, for instance, it means that, well, I appreciate I should send something across this VPN tunnel, but something is wrong. I can't really tell you what, but something is wrong. And here below, 
you can see IPsec protocols, protocols that are in use at the moment. We use AES and SHA for IPsec, IC phase 2. In this video, we talked about a side-to-side -side IPsec VPN on a Cisco device. I appreciate it might be pretty advanced for uh, some of you. Still, it is really important to see how you can apply, as you know, VPN protocols and everything that you have learned so far in the real world. I hope it will show you and you will have a very good idea what you have to learn to apply a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN on a real device. If you have a web interface it is a little easier, still you have to go through all these stages. You have to understand what Ike Phase 1 is, what Ike Phase 2 is. You will have to understand which things have to match on both ends to make it work. Thank you very much.